It's critical that we know more about the forces that affect the mountain snowpack and how much water it yields. That's the goal of the Mountain Hydrology Group, led by scientists from UC Merced, like Martha Conklin. But what we need to do is develop some new technology, spot measurements, that give us a better idea of how much snow has fallen, and then we'll know what's going to be there in the spring when it melts. Teams have been installing networks of ground-based sensors in key Sierra locations, like this one, near the giant trees forest of Sequoia National Park. It's a challenge to set up and maintain sensitive electronic instruments in an extremely harsh mountain environment. Scientists have to be part handyman, part mountain goat. There are more than 200 sensors already working in this one basin. Well, I've got a, a problem with the uh, power coming to this site. I just don't think we get enough solar radiation here. Right. Power that battery. Right. Um, we might need to relocate that panel this summer. Yeah. Get it up higher. Well, it's what we have for now. Let's see, let's see if I've got any data coming in. That data will form a first ever map of indicators like soil temperature and moisture, solar radiation and snow depth, even stream flow underneath the snow. That instrument right there that's hanging off the tower to the left is an ultrasonic snow depth sensor. Sometimes we call them pingers. These scattered observatories make up a kind of woods wide web that's already feeding new snowfall data to the Department of Water Resources, and more is on the way. And the problem that we have right now is that we don't really understand the cycles and the timing and the distribution and, and amount of water that we're going to get from snowpack in the mountains. And the cycling of water through the soil, within the streams, and when we can expect runoff to occur, those are critical tools that um, water managers will need and can use in the future. If you're trekking around out here, you might come across something that looks like a walkie-talkie hanging from a tree. But it's a relay, gathering data from the hydrologic stations up on the mountain, and then sending them over to a base station computer nearby, which the researchers can access right from their own labs down in the valley. They'll take those readings and combine them with data from NASA's Aqua satellite, which can measure snow cover over much wider areas. One of the things that we're trying to quantify in here and understand better is how much of the area is covered with snow because it's difficult with a satellite to, to look underneath these trees. What's happening in the snowpack will affect more than our water supply. As more snow shifts to rain in the upper elevations, plants and trees will have to adjust or die. We should expect that lower elevation trees will be moving up higher and some of the trees that we associate with higher elevations might be dying off. They're wet during the rain event, but they dry out much sooner. So trees and other um, plants that were expecting to have water longer won't be able to get that. So we should expect to see major ecosystem shifts that occur.